Something's been rising in Arky here, and I think given the fact that they casually end the episode with him using his uncurse ability on attempting just the fingertip, but in return, changing his entire hand and forearm there, something's about to be rising more, especially given that they had such spicy scenes like the, you know, Aryan walking into the bath, and seriously, I mean... That's just writing itself in terms of amazing content. But I have to say, this is interesting because this is the first time in terms of a series where you have a character who played a game or was aware of something in their world and then was put into seemingly that environment and, you know, in the case of Ark, is playing his game avatar. Stuff that he's basically bullshitting along the way because it's for RP purposes, right? Because, for one, the reason a lot of things are the way they are for his character is because of how he built his character slash the role-playing because that's how a lot of people play RPGs and MMOs and things like that. But when you're interacting with seemingly real people now, you can't really explain the concepts of video games. You have to just kind of string things along. So the idea of explaining his appearance, a curse, right? It's, it's not how, like, why he looks like a skeleton to begin with. It's because that's the skin he chose for his avatar, basically. The type of character he chose. But in the context of this world, a curse is the only way to justify it without having pitchforks raised and being burned at the stake. So I quite enjoy the fact that for this world, even though it's something that he's just randomly stringing together, it doesn't change the fact that now that this is a real reality, the reason he looks like it can actually be a curse, even though he was lying about it. He's even reflecting on that whole thing. Like, you know, Aryan's parents are saying, hey, we can go this spring. It's very possible this could decurse you, something like that. And just casually, because he has his own pretty impressive magic, and I didn't even think of it myself, didn't see anyone think of it, the fact that he basically saved all those children, what if that same ability could, you know, potentially do it to him? What I was expecting to happen was nothing would occur when he did that ability, but when they got to the spring, that would actually turn him into, like, some form of human. But it's quite interesting, because there's two options he can go about this, right? One... Make sure he never shows his hand, because if now he has a human hand, like, they're gonna be like, what the hell, why, why are you just bullshitting us, right? There could be a exaggerated, over-exaggerated response there, right? So, I'm thinking there's two ways to go about this. He hides it, and he waits to get to the spring, and even if the spring doesn't do anything, he'll use his own ability on himself, like, as a full-body thing, and he'll just say the spring healed him. Or two, he'll just very quickly, as they're on their adventure with R.E.M., be like, apparently my ability that I saved those kids with can also save me, so should I just do it? And then probably that's the way. I have a feeling they'll go the route of him keeping it a secret till the spring, and then he'll heal himself in the spring. But it's an interesting thing, right? Because even though you could look at his appearance as a curse, like, he was even saying, like, it's just a story I made, so this would all work out. But the fact that because this is now reality... I've never quite seen something like this where someone's playing their game avatar now and the things that were just because it's a video game, now they have to come up with reasons for the characters in this world who don't know what a video game is. But in return, you can also have that be this happy coincidence that the lie you told them actually is a mechanic in this world, so therefore your skeleton body could actually be a human body if you uncurse it. It's a pretty cool concept that I really haven't seen before in anime. This episode, though, was pretty damn wholesome and hilarious, and a little horny and spicy, of course, but meeting the parents was great because, I mean, just immediately, they just give you confidence in what they're saying and doing. I mean, in the case of her mom, right? She's someone who is an amazing cook, she takes care of you, she is, without a doubt, an amazing mother figure, but she can kick your ass as well in terms of hand-to-hand -hand combat. And you can see where the daughters got their kind of physical strength from in terms of, you know, her 1v1-ing Arky there. And just the fact that he, you know, she calls him Arky, which is just, I love the embarrassment from his own voice there. And then in terms of the father being the village elder there, he just gives you a lot of confidence that he's not someone who would rush into war or would just punish someone because of fear. He very much seems like he has a solid head on his shoulders, someone who's cool, calm, and collected, and I think between the two of them, you can understand why the village is still standing all these years later. And the idea of the mom, you know, I think she says, like, you know, I'm turning 170 again, and I'm always going to be turning 170, but apparently she's 270. If there's ever been a title for MILF in terms of anime, I mean, she definitely deserves it. Or even seeing the sister who was not what I was expecting. Anyone who's watching The Executioner and Her Way of Life, that princess, in terms of the, like, badass princess in that show, that's who I was kind of expecting, someone who is a lot more, like, physically fit, like, 
buff, like mature, something like that. Nope, just a bundle of big sister energy who apparently can kick your ass, which after seeing the mother is no shocker, but I definitely had a different picture in my head, especially given the way that Ariane has been explaining what she's like. But it's great though because you just get a good sense of what this family and village is while simultaneously progressing Ark's own personal journey massively forward, right? Because this man is like living out his gamer's wet dream and it just keeps getting better. The biggest hurdle for him was that, you know, he's surrounded by all these hot elf babes, but he's a skeleton, right? What the hell is he gonna do? Even if like he falls in love, you know, the inability to do anything physical is gonna drive anyone insane. Now, apparently, he's not even going to have to struggle in that way. The man is literally living his best life here. The only question I have now is that if he does, you know, completely cure his body, he probably will have to be a little safer, right? Because up until this point, he's been a skeleton. And you could argue being a skeleton is worse than a human because, you know, there's no protection on the bones and the bones could shatter. But I'd argue with having flesh on his actual character, he now can be wounded a lot more than he could have been up until this point. So there's some different hurdles, there's positive, there's negative, but I love the fact that this show isn't afraid to have fun and, you know, poke fun at tropes, gimmicks, and what a hardcore gamer who's now trapped in what should be a video game but now is his reality would say, do, and experience, and the little, like, visual gags that they continue to have fun with, like the fact that when he's sleeping, Ponta will actually crawl inside his ribcage because, I mean, what animal wouldn't do that? If you have a cat, if you have a dog, right? The fact that if you lay a box on the floor, if you lay anything around, they're going to experience it. So if you had, like, essentially a cage that's open, it's ventilated, and it's connected to you, there's no reason why even the most royal of spirit animals wouldn't crawl into your rib cage. It's something I wouldn't normally say in a video, but it just kind of makes sense. It just feels like an author in a studio who understands how to make something feel realistic despite having all these fantasy elements surrounding it. That's why I love this show. It really has continued to impress me. It's gotten like slightly better every episode, sometimes massively better, sometimes just a little bit better, but it does feel like a constant climb rather than a kind of like a roller coaster, up and down, up and down. And I've said that about a couple of shows this season, but it just feels like because this is such a quality season, easily the best of the year, the shows that are airing are impressing me more than normal. Usually there might be one or two shows that, you know, really surprise me, twist something on its head, but there's been oh, a big handful of shows doing that, and that's why I really, really enjoy it. But I mean, thoughts if you have any, I mean, there's a lot to love. The sister, the mother, the father, the new journey in terms of like they're setting up the kind of like elven war that very much could happen. Being smart about it as well, you know, some people being like, how could they break our treaty? You know, this has just recently happened. For humans, it's history to them. For us, it's still our own lives. They're really playing with some interesting concepts that feel genuine. So let me know how you're feeling down below. Leave a like if you enjoy and subscribe if you're new around here. Till next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.